through. Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. Now today, I uh, uh, welcome you in here uh, just to have a time together and spend some time and uh, all you be out there uh, taking care of yourself and uh, staying home and uh, and watching some videos. So today I'm going to do a live, this live broadcast today. I'm going to do a painting. I'm going to do, I'm going to paint some rocks and water. So I think you'll enjoy that. I've got a sketch and uh, I'll show you the drawing and some of the things I've done to get ready. And then we'll talk about uh, the rest of the week. Uh, I'll be coming back on Thursday and on Saturday. And I got some information about Saturday. So we'll pass about that. I'll talk about that before I sign off. So let's go over to my painting table. Let me get started on the rocks. Oh, I don't have. I get my close up slide. Oh, the camera moved on me. Where'd it go? Ever. Just a moment, honey. Okay. Okay, I was setting up uh, some of my information over here. Uh, this is a reference photograph that I used uh, for the painting. Every time I do a painting, I usually have a reference photograph. Picture that I took, or these came out of the internet, uh, a couple pictures of rocks and uh, and, I, and also the water I like these, these so I use the combination of these two uh, pictures to come up with a design so from that what I did was I went ahead and drew up my design plan uh, of the rocks and a little bit of water and the sky is up here now what I call this uh, rocks is a exercise in working on texture because the rocks are very rough and rugged, so texture will be the main theme today. It's also, look at the, if you look at the picture, the rocks are a dominant shape. So it's also a dominant painting, which makes it very dramatic. And the temperature of today is going to be cool. What I mean by that is it's going to be cool colors. The blues in the sky and the blues in the water. And then the, the actual colors on the rock will be uh, cooler. So, and I also marked myself down in a little sketch here of, uh, I'm going to go from uh, a dark value to a light and so forth. So that's this what this means over here. I'm going to scale this down. Now, what I, once I take the, the information off of a photograph and make my sketch, this is what I paint to. I don't look at the photograph anymore. So, from, so once I do my uh, design plan, then I paint from this. This is my... This is my uh, uh, planning steps for the actual painting. I'll go over to the uh, board. This overhead camera. And here, uh, let me go over some of my supplies. I've got, uh, I've got three brushes here today. I've got a three quarter inch flat brush. I have a, a medium sized round brush. A half inch flat brush. And I use different brushes for uh, different colors, so they don't mix them up too easily, you know, too hard. And uh, here's <clears throat> here's a piece of paper I have here with my drawing on. And <clears throat> excuse me, I have to get a drink of water. <clears throat> Let me bring this over. I'll use my close-up camera so you can see. Uh, this is my sketch on my watercolor paper. It's light; it's dark enough to see where things are, but light enough so when I cover it over, the pencil marks will go away. So let's go back to the let's go back to the overhead again. Okay, now I have some other tools here. <laughs> tools, well, these are things I use. This is an old credit card. If I can pick it up. Never had much trouble before. I got an old credit card, and then I cut that uh, in pieces. 
got that in, in several pieces here. Now that can be used for texture, and that's why I got these old credit cards. So they come in handy. Uh, and then I've got a, a baby toothbrush here, which I can use to move, splatter some uh, some paint on the on the uh, on the painting. And I also have a spray bottle, a dot spray bottle, my palette dot spray, and I have a couple colors here that I can also use uh, in a dot spray bottle. And also, I'm going to use uh, artist tape today. I'm going to show you how I use the artist tape in my painting. Actually, this is painter's tape. This happens to be a blue, a blue variety. Oh, I'm going to mix up some colors here. I'm going to do the sky first. And I'm going to do it a little bit different way than I've done before. I'm going to mix up my colors. This is ultramarine blue, the darkest blue I have. The next blue is cobalt blue, which is the medium view, which is the medium blue. Then the third blue I have here is uh, cerulean, which is a light blue. So I'm going to use three colors of uh, three shades of blue, both in the sky and of course in the water. I have three shades of blue. And down here, when I get into the rocks, uh, I'll be. This is uh, yellow ochre. And next to that I have a burnt sienna. And over here in the corner, which you can't see, which is, uh, you can see the edge of it there, that's uh, hooker's green on the far right bottom. Okay. So what I'm going to start out with, I'm going to start out with the sky. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, a, I'm going to take the spray bottle and uh, I'll reach you back on a I'll get my glasses on here so I can see. I'm going to spray up in the sky the water. I'm going to paint around the cloud shapes. And then I'm going to pick up the paint, ultramarine, and I'm going to make a dark sky at the top. And as I come down, it's going to pick up. It's going to pick up some of that uh, that water I have there. Let's hope it works. <laughs> pick up a little cobalt blue now. And coming down, it gets a little bit cool. It gets a little bit uh, lighter. I'm really working on the shape of the clouds here just a little bit, just to, uh, those water drops. Now I'll rinse out the brush. Now I'm going to pick up some of that uh, cerulean blue. Come on down. The sky gets, will get a little lighter as I come down toward the, uh, toward the water. Okay, now the sky is done. I let that dry because I'm going to be putting something on top of that. But while that's uh, drying, I can go ahead and start over here on that. Now this is a this is a tree up here, so I'm going to put a little bit of Hooker's green, a dark green, mix it in with a little bit of the ultramarine blue, and I'm using the round brush for this. I'm mixing that, that color up, and as I come to the edge here, I'll start building a little texture for the trees.
Okay. Now also, well, I think I'll go ahead and start on the, on the rocks. Uh, with these three colors I have mixed here, I can put the uh, small brush away. Now, so what I'm going to use for the rocks now, I'm going to use, uh, again, I'm going to use ultramarine blue. I'll make a big puddle of that. I'm going to use the uh, yellow ochre and uh, burnt sienna. Now I'm going to start here painting, uh, I'll start with a lighter color, start here with a yellow ochre a little bit. And when I go in, I'm going to be thinking about uh, texture. So these are rough brush strokes. And then when I go down to the palette, I'm going to pick up another color, in this case, uh, ultramarine, blue. When I go down, I'll pick up burnt sienna. When I drag the brush, I'll also lay it flat so I get a rough brush stroke. Each time I go back to the palette, I'm going to pick up another color. brush in different directions using the side of the brush now I'm going to put a little buzz put a dot spray bottle, I'm going to put this water, I'm going to put a little bit of water down here. Again, that'll give me uh, some texture. Let's see. I'm not ready to work on the edges yet. I'll leave the edges alone for a moment, okay? Now I'm checking my sky up there to see if it's time for me to get the water, get the, uh, the water in. Okay. And now I watch the I watch the dryness. I'm going to darken some of this up a little bit because uh, I'm going to have some light shining for the sky, but some of this will be darker. So I'm putting more of that blue down here. I'm checking the, uh, the shininess of the paper here. It's almost ready. I might have to, I don't want to put the air uh, out. Usually if I, if I wanted to dry something real fast, I use a hair dryer or something like that, but I'm just going to, oh, I got a little bit of fuzzy, fuzzy picture up there. Let me bring it over to the close up. Let's see, let's try the close up camera. Let me show you where we are. Uh, yeah, it's turned out okay. Here's a close-up camera. So the, the paint's real nice and wet and juicy. But I've got uh, three colors mixed up with rough brush strokes on the rocks. And I've got the sky and the breath. I'm waiting for this area pretty dry so I can get the water in. That's the next stage I want to go in before I do any more. So I'm waiting for that to dry and I think it's almost ready. I think it's dry enough. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, take a piece of this uh, blue painter's tape. Let me see. Yeah, let me let me bring over here. Okay. All right now I'm back on the main camera. Okay, I'm going to take a, a piece of this uh, painter's tape, and this is up on the end.
And I'm going to put that across the board. Now what this does, this gives me a nice sharp horizon line, which is what I want. So I'm going to move this down so I can see the horizon line. And I'm going to put that tape down about right there. Then I want to seal the bottom edge here because that's the part I don't want the the uh, paint to go back into. So I'm sealing the bottom edge of that of that tape. Okay, now uh, I need to clean up my paints a little bit because I'm going to use that color. So I'm going to use my sponge, wipe up the paint. I'm going to bring in another brush. This this is a this is a synthetic. We'll buy a three-quarter inch brush, which I use. Uh, these supplies I have on my website. I have brushes and paints and paper. And uh, my dot spray bottles. So I'm going to mix up uh, the same colors that I had in the sky. I'm going to have uh, ultramarine blue, a little bit of cobalt, and then a little bit of cerulean, because I'm going to do this uh, same color scheme on this, in the water. All right. So I'm going to take up the, uh, load up the brush. I use both sides of the brush when I load the brush. Both sides, uh, and I load the brush from the side, not just the tips, but the side of the brush. That loads it up. Okay, then I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to, I can paint down, down from the edge of that. Now if this works, this will be a nice, sharp edge up here. Now as I come down I'm going to leave some white paper showing to show maybe uh, some waves or some water splashing around there so I can play with that. Now before I go any further let's just make sure I got a nice sharp edge. Now I take that tape off and there Wow. <laughs> now isn't that cool? Isn't that better than trying to figure out how to brush that across with a brush? See that keeps a nice sharp smooth horizon line and that's what I wanted to see. Okay so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe I'll put some, I'm going to play with uh, the water a little bit. So here I'm going to as I go along, now I'm just design, I'm going, I'm designing this as I go along. I'm just using my own uh, interpretation of some white, maybe some white caps out here. Uh, maybe, the, maybe the wind is blowing up the water a little bit, a little current flowing. Now I'll come on down here for a little ways uh, with the ultramarine blue. Uh, let's see. I, I don't, at proportional way, I just want to come down enough and I'll gradually switch ship into cobalt blue. Also, I'm also look, thinking about the, the sizes now because uh, those are those are pretty big uh, little areas out there. So I'm going to close those down just a little bit because I don't want them to be too large, but just enough to give a little interest. Now, as I come down, let's go. But let's go past this rock here, maybe with uh, with that first color and. Uh, the water is going to be around the rocks. There's one rock out here in the water. Okay, then I'm going to rinse out my brush, get clean water, and I'm going to pick up some of that cobalt blue. Now, cobalt blue is a, a little less, is a little lighter. So now I'm gradually moving forward. I'm getting lighter as I come down. And that was my plan, is to put, have this area lighter as I come, this gives me a, a sense of depth in the water. When I, when I have a horizontal plane like water or ground, the way you, the way you interpret depth is to modify the value. So here I'm going from dark to light. Now here around these rocks I want to leave some white 
showing possibly the, the waves are splashing up against the rock so I want to leave a little bit of white showing. So I'll paint around some of these areas but leave, leave some white paper. And we're coming down to uh, the, the cobalt, cobalt blue. Okay, now my last color I'm going to use is cerulean. So rinse out my brush and pick up cerulean. Now I could, uh, before I do that, before I put it on the paper though, usually I'll have, I'll take a test sheet and I'll, and I'll sample the color to see where I, see where I am. As far as value, well, that's okay. I check my color and I check my value. Now this is the lighter one. I'm coming close to where I am or where I'm viewing this, so it's going to be a lighter value. And I'll just go ahead and put this all in real quickly. Leave some white paper coming forward. And I can paint over some of those rocks. I'm going to go in. Uh, put a darker value on them anyway. Okay. Alright, now I'm going to go back there. Now let, me, uh, let me bring that up close for you to see also. Uh, let me transition to uh, close up. So I've got the I've got the water in with a nice sharp horizon line. And as I came down, I have the darker value and coming down to lighter value uh, of blue. Ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, and cerulean blue. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to go back and work on some of these rocks now. Uh, and I'm going to pick up a dark color, ultramarine, and a little bit of a all those colors I use for the rock, I'll use a little bit of ultramarine, ultra, a little bit of uh, quinacridone violet, a little bit of a little bit of burnt sienna, and ultramarine gives me a nice dark color. And what I want to do now is make sure I have a dark value out here. have a dark value here that's showing up on these rocks. And I can start uh, building some shadow patterns now about that are around these rocks. And these rocks are out here in the water. I can put some color out there. And this this area here I want to have a dark area. Because the rocks are wet here, let me transition you over. Sorry about that. I was uh, so busy painting it, I didn't realize I would switch the camera. But what I've done is I've gone ahead and added in a dark edge over here on these top rocks, and moving down, putting dark layers of, of color, and breaking up these shapes a little bit. So this is, and the rocks would be dark out here next to the water, that's where the water is splashing up and wetting those rocks. So this, this gives you an indication that the, the water has hit those rocks uh, on the edge. Also I can separate some of the shapes with uh, a little dark color. Uh, this one down here, again I can define the edge a little better with this dark color. And this one here, I want to define the bottom. This one here is stuck out in the water, way out in the water. So, and here's another rock in the water. I put that out there. And there's a smaller rock out here. And here's a third one. So I put. Now when I do shapes, there's a not all the same. This is they're all different variety of shapes. I'm still using the same color mix. I'm still using. Uh, uh, Burnt Sienna, 
mixed in with uh, ultramarine blue and uh, I added in some quinacridone violet uh, into the mix to make the dark values. Let's see. Then I want to come down here and put this one in dark. Because these, these rocks here next to the water are going to be wet because that's where the water is going to be splashing up on top. Uh, and keeping the water, keeping the uh, rocks wet so it'll be darker. A little rock down here in the water. And this one here. Maybe this one down here is darker because the water has already wet this area. Now I'm going to take the bigger brush and I'm going to load in some darker color. Same colors, I'm using the same colors, ultramarine, burnt sienna, and I'm going to put a darker value on this and I'm going to vary my brush strokes, uh, crisscross, different lengths, different angles. Let's see, uh, one area that I'd like to finish off up here would be at the top. Um, I'm going to put a, put a dark mix up here also, up next to this tree. There's a tree up here, and it's over overlying the rocks. There'll be some shadow from the tree coming down. But then this white area, the, the light's coming here, it might hit this rock and make it turn uh, a little bit lighter because of the light reflecting off the rock. Okay, now I'm going to play with the... Uh, oh, they're almost invisible. I'm going to take a piece of this. This is a piece I cut out of the... Uh, uh, credit card and now let's start down here because this is a bigger area so what I can do here is kind of scrape now now this will bring out some more texture I can get lines and grooves so by and I've, the way I've cut the uh, see if you can see that the way I've cut the angle I made uh, little angles on the corner I've cut a long but, but I got little little corners here that I can use also And I can start pulling together some of this color. So let's say it's dark area, I can bring in here and kind of bring it out and make a little couple stripes. Maybe tie in that. Uh, so I can start playing with some of these colors I have here. As long as it's still wet, you can move this around. Now this big area up here again, another one. I'll turn the, I'll turn it around to this angle. So here's a long. I got a long side and a short side. So I'll use the shorter side up here. And let me pull some of that stuff. We'll move that around. Okay, now as I as I twist it and turn it and bend it, I'm getting texture marks on the paper because I'm moving the I'm moving the paint. And that gives an interesting effect when the paint dries. Okay. Now I think that's becoming uh, that's becoming real interesting looking. Uh, I got some white up here. That could be splashing from the waves on the water. That's fine. There's light coming through this area, uh, hitting the rocks. It makes them shine a little, a little lighter. And some sparkle down in here where the light's reflecting off some of the edges. And then I can go in one more time, picking up that dark mix of uh, ultramarine, a little bit of quinacridone violet. Ultramarine, burnt sienna.
and I can go in and do some final areas I want to put shadows in. And if I don't like that area, let's say I, don't, I want to leave that one lighter, I pick, take, a, uh, take a towel or a tissue and just pick it up. So I'm just using a brush now and putting in some more uh, pigment. And then down here I can put in some more. Back here in this area will be much darker because it's way out of area of the light. Then I'll go back to my uh, my scraper. And while it's still wet, I'll move that around because it's uh, kind of stationary now. But I can move that dark around a little bit now and give me a little shadow pattern in among the in among the uh, rock areas. And you don't want to overdo this. You want to do enough to make it interesting, make it give a little more texture, uh, a little variety. Down here is a big area, so I can go wild with the with the scraping because the rocks are going to be larger, larger movement. And the last technique, the last technique I, I could use the little brush, the little uh, toothbrush. It's a little baby, it's a little, little baby toothbrush, a little baby toothbrush, and it has a nice. Uh, texture amount to it. I can splatter some dark colors. Again to give me another another look. I don't want to splatter I don't want to splatter this into the into the ocean because I don't want to have drops out there, but up here in the rocks it won't hurt at all. And then my spray bottle is the final final touch would be to put in some water. Now what the water does, it gives me it gives me uh, water blossoms, and those water blossoms give you a nice texture uh, quality of the of the look. Now let me bring this over. It's still wet, but I can bring it over and have you take a look at that. You see the see down here where the uh, the muddling is the, the starting to uh, muddle and change because of the water being added there. That'll, that'll create a blossom, which will be an interesting shape. Then up here, with the darks and lights, you get some other effects uh, with that value. I think I'll just, I'll just fine tune a couple little places here. And I think uh, I've got I to gotta keep remembering off camera. <laughs> Keep moving the camera around. Okay, I'm on the overhead camera again. Okay, there we are. All right. Yeah, let's stop. This this a pound of bottle is my design. It's a pound of bottle, and it's a dot spray, and it's on my website. Uh, it gives a dot spray with a little with a fine light touch. And it gives you a display, it gives you a dispersed pattern of drops. And even even the, the paint in the bottles with color. You can add color to the water. All the water colors work in this. And I can use all these colors the same way. It give me a, a, a dispersed pattern. So that's a dot spray. Um, oh, I want to add one, I'm gonna add one more thing. Now because this is a, a, a waterscape. Well, actually, it's rocks, but it's really a waterscape. Uh, I think I'll put a. I don't want. I don't want to use red. I think I'll use blue. What I can do out here on the horizon. Is I can put a little 
a little sail out here. Which would indicate uh, someone's out there possibly with a sailboat. So it would be the final little bit of splatter there, it's fine. Okay. Now before I leave that, uh, I didn't put them, I didn't put them on the painting, but the spray bottle, let me show you the, the dot spray bottle. This is the, I got, I got burnt sienna in a spray bottle here to a spray pattern. And I also got a spray bottle with quinacridone violet. And just a little light touch gives me a nice dot pattern. And then I go back with the, the water and spread out those drops. And uh, even have one over here with a little bit of burnt, a little bit of uh, cobalt blue in. Okay. So on Thursday, on my Thursday show, I'm going to have, I'm going to play with the spray bottles. I'm going to do a painting just with spray bottles. Uh, it might be a couple brush marks, but I'm going to do the majority of my painting in spray bottles. So that uh, if you come back Thursday at two o'clock, you'll see the spray bottles in action. But this is an idea of the kind of work, and it's very quickly here, uh, a nice pattern of dot spray. Okay. And that makes it very, very interesting. You could do trees, bushes, flowers, grass. I've done, I've done water scenes. I've done the crashing waves. So there's all kinds of things you can do with the, the dot spray bottle. Okay. Well, let me show you a final painting I did uh, a while back. This is this is an old painting, but let me show you. If I put a mat, if I put a mat board around this, you can see I could I could crop it off at the top a little bit, or I could, especially at the bottom, I could crop off some of the rocks at the bottom, and so I could I could frame this into a, a small into a smaller dimension. Uh, I can I can crop out some of the rocks here and there, but you can see that'd be a very interesting composition uh, for a, a, a painting that can be uh, mounted. All right. Now this is a painting I did, I did it a while back, but uh, here I got the rocks here with a crashing wave, uh, some rocks here on the ground, and then the water in the background, okay? And a couple of birds flying out there. So here, this, is a, this is one subject matter that I, that I like to uh, uh, use once in a while. I love to paint the ocean and the rocks and so forth. So that's an example there of a, of a finished painting using rocks. Yeah, yeah, Gloria's helping me here. She found a, a mat board I can put around this. That would work. Okay. May not be the final color, but there's the idea. There's a smaller, uh, there's a smaller mat board that can go around that, and I can move that up and down if I want more, more sky. So 
so I could play around with the format. So that turned out that turned out looking pretty good. I like the dark. I like this dark area in here. This nice dark area in here, the rocks, and then the, the light areas out here in the water, and the, the, the effect of light coming through, hitting some of the rocks, and of course the water itself. Okay, so. Thank you, honey. Thank you, Claire. All right. So, uh, let me go back to my main camera. Okay. Okay, I had my glasses on so I could see some of the, some of the finer points of the painting. Uh, Okay, that concludes today's demonstration of painting. I think it really turned out very well. Uh, I like what happened. Uh, that, that to me uh, demonstrates what you can do uh, with a small picture, a quick drawing. I used the, uh, the tape on there to give me a nice straight hor uh, horizon line. And then I played with uh, the brushwork and I played with uh, the scraper, which I call the scraper. It's really a, a credit card that you cut up and uh, use in different sizes. Okay, but it can turn out real well. Okay, my next uh, broadcast I mentioned on Thursday, uh, I'm going to work with spray bottles. I'm going to do a whole painting just with spray bottles. And I hope you'll tune in to uh, check that one out. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, on Saturday, I'm going to do a paint along, and I'm going to have a downloadable sketch for that particular painting. And it's a painting that anybody can do. And uh, whatever supplies you have, you can do it. In, if you have pencils, colored pencils, watercolor pencils, crayons, watercolor, little watercolor sets. But make sure you have some good paper uh, if you're going to use water on it. Make sure you have paper that will take, a, will take some water. Uh, but we're going to do a, a, we're going to do a simple little, uh, well, it's not a simple painting, but it's, a, it's just an easy little painting that everybody can do. And I think you'd enjoy doing it together. But I think the, uh, the texture on that one and also the shapes, I think you'll find interesting. But it's for anybody that wants to join in on Saturday, and I'll have the downloadable link. Uh, best place to contact me. Let me put my information up on the... On the uh, let's see, on a close-up. Okay. Now the best way to, the best way to find me uh, is to go to Everest Watercolors www.everestwatercolors.com. That's my website, and on there I'll have the uh, I'll have the replay of today's uh, program, so you can watch it again and look it over, and play it back and forth. And you can also contact me at facebook.com fb.com slash Everest Watercolors, and there I have uh, again announcements on the, the broadcasts and so forth. Now, if you subscribe to my channel, you'll be notified of all future uh, live shows that I have so that you, you won't miss any, or if you want to be aware of it, it's what's coming down the road. But I'll be on thir this Thursday at 2 o'clock and on Saturday at 2 o'clock. So you may want to look out and be on aware that they're, they're going to be coming down the road. So appreciate you for looking at uh, the video today. And uh, I want you all to... Stay home like I am. Stay home and stay safe and stay healthy. Uh, that's the name of the game. So we're all, we're all in it together. But uh, I want to share my art with you and hopefully pass some time with you uh, that would be both productive both for you and for me. So I appreciate you for stopping by. Uh, I'll see you next time, hopefully on Thursday and maybe even Saturday. So you have a safe day. Bye for now. See you next, see you next time.